words of my mouth, the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight. Thou all be done according to your will in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 I put the word out. There were some that said they wanted to get involved with this. I hope they can tune in, but that's all right if they're not able to make it. I was talking to another pastor earlier this week, and he stopped and he said, Lord, what will you have me to do? And then he kept talking. Then I said, Brother Johnny, uh, that's an awfully good sermon because then the Lord was turning things in my head about what he said. Lord, what will you have me to do? As Christians, we have an ob uh, obligation to listen to God, but it was fascinating when I took the time to research our thoughts, the average person on how many thoughts they have in a day. So this is how I ended up getting to this, uh, wanting to bring it to you today. So I'm hoping that you'll enjoy what you see and what you hear. Uh, I'm going to ask my wife. If she will, will to, is to bring up 2 Corinthians, the ninth chapter, verses 1 through 12. While you're getting ready for that, I want you to keep this in your thought as well. Proverbs, the third chapter, verse 6. In all thy ways, acknowledge him, and he shall direct thy path. I researched the thoughts on Maybe how many thoughts a person would make during the day, and I was, it was hilarious to me. <laughs> when I first internet source to estimate that an adult makes about 35,000 conscious decisions each day. No wonder my mind gets tired. Says that a child makes about 3,000. So my question is to you, how many of those decisions are made with the direction of God's control for your life? I'm me stop and think and that's why I want to bring it to you today as God has given it to me and uh, if my wife will I want her to read 2nd Corinthians the ninth chapter uh, starting with verse 1 and read through 12 for as touching the ministry ministering to the saints it is super fluctuous for me to write to you for I know the forwardness of your mind, for which I boast of you to them of Macedonia, that Asia was ready a year ago, and your zeal hath provoked very many. Yet have I sent the brethren, lest our boasting of you should be in vain in this behalf, that as I said, ye may be ready, lest haply if they of Macedonia come with me and find you unprepared, we that we say not, yea, should be ashamed in this same confident boasting. Therefore, I thought it necessary to exhort the brethren that they would go before unto you and make up beforehand your bounty, whereof ye had noticed before that the same might be ready as a matter of bounty and not as of convetuous, convetuousness. But this I say, he which soweth sparingly shall reap also sparingly, and he which soweth bountifully shall reap also bountifully. Every man according as his purpose in his heart, so let him give, not grudgingly, or of necessity, for God loveth a chill forgiver. And God is able to make all grace abound towards you, that ye, always having all sufficiency in all things, may abound to every good work. As it is written, he hath dispersed abroad, he hath given to the poor. His righteousness remaineth forever. Now he that ministereth seed to the sower, both minister bread for your food and multiply your seed sown and increase the fruits of your righteousness. Be enriched in everything to all bountifulness, which causes, causes 
through us thanksgiving to God for the administration of this service not only supply of the want of the saints but is abundant also many thanksgivings unto God whilst by the experiment Whiles by first, the experience first 12 was enough uh to, to read oh so okay thinking? all right thank you so this chapter kind of caught me because there is a lot going on here that we need to take the time to understand what it's doing i want to kind of like go to the end and then go back to the beginning of the story and of this message. Here, Paul was bragging on uh, of some people in Macedonia. But this is something that we in our life should be prepared for because what they were doing was he was bringing a group of people with him to another location. And when they come, the bounty, meaning uh, the money, the finances that was needed, it was asked them to be prepared in advance. Listen to that. Being prepared in advance for several reasons. One is because of his also boasting about their capability and who they are in Macedonia. He did not want to bring anybody with them down there and then they act like they didn't have the funds to treat them according to their as they deserve to be treated you ever go especially in our organized churches you ever go to a place where they invite the church over and they're going to have dinner waiting for you when you get there have anybody participated in that type of uh, uh invitation i'm sure you have and the worst part about it, when you get there and they don't have enough food to serve everybody that comes, uh, I learned and I told my wife, I had learned from past experience, don't go nowhere hungry. Because if you go there hungry and they don't have no food to feed you, it's going to mess up the rest of your day. Mm -hmm. Not to mention the service or whatever you was attending when people don't have enough food. But he was telling them at that point to give freely. Verse 6 says, but this I say, he which soweth sparingly shall reap also sparingly. Keep that in your mind as one of your decisions when you're doing things uh, in your giving uh, to others as well as to yourself. Make note of these things that you're doing. If you do anything that has a grudge to it or you don't have a heart to do it. It is really, other than show, that's the only purpose that you're giving it because God is, is looking up on your heart. And he's telling you here that he does not like that type of giver. So Paul was teaching them that you got people that's coming, freely give, but don't do it because you don't, you know, do it because you want to, not because you're doing it because you're directed to do that. That also takes me to a lot of church giving. Uh, I know a lot of churches always want to bring up in Malachi about your giving and God will bless you with blessings uh, and abundance pressed down and shaken together and overflowing. Mm -hmm. I've been hearing that for years. I've been in church all my life. I'm sorry. I have not been in one church yet where somebody who... Uh, is giving because of by demand and direction that they live the life of an abundance based upon their giving that is because that concept that's being taught is not the real concept you will notice that the people who are getting rich is the the landlords who's uh, taking the rent and then the and oftentimes a lot of the pastors who are preaching taking the salaries not against pastors taking on any salary. So please don't take that and run with the saying that I'm um, against it. That's not what I'm saying. I will take lessons that I've learned from another pastor that I've listened to, even online, others I know. They will not accept uh, the, the amount of money given to them that the church wants to give them when they're giving 
their money that is beyond the average person that attends the church is able to live on. I love that. So that way he's not beyond mm -hmm. where this flock is. Uh, if if his based the most of his church is elderly people on fixed incomes that don't have high uh, big paying jobs, it's an insult to the body for you to have a big a large amount of money and then beg for the bills to be paid for. Uh, no money when people in the church need a helping hand. You're not doing things. So Paul was teaching his people here. Look, give sparingly. And, and and it says, and he which soweth bountifully shall reap also bountifully. Verse 7 says, every man according as he purposed in his heart. Okay, when you make decisions, where does your decision making come from? You got your mind. You got your heart. Mm -hmm. Those two work together. You, you don't like doing anything that your heart says, that don't seem right or no, I don't want to do that. I'm tired of this. Or your mind says, I don't like you. I don't want to do this. You're not going to do right with it. If your heart and your mind is not solid in giving out of the loving spirit in which God has given to you, your giving is in vain. Mm -hmm. fact, when they ask for, the, the church asks for you to give, give $500 to this, this event. I've seen this so many times going to pay off a church building and I've been to so many churches and the building and never got paid off. And they got people mm -hmm. right now, $500 check. Some people taking a thousand dollars down there. Then they know they don't have the money in the account. And they're going down All right. that kind of stuff. Putting money out at the foot of the altar. These are things of show. God is not in that. That's right. right. Amen. Not in that. The Bible says right here in verse uh, seven, every man according as he perfect in his heart, so let him give. What's the first thing he says? Not grudgingly. Not grudgingly. Mm -hmm. That means you're doing it. You don't want to do it. So you're doing it because you told you was asked to, or you trying to uh, you want to make a show before the people that uh, this is how I support my church. What's the next one? Or is of necessity. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you give it because you need something back. That, that's, that's not God. The Bible says, For God loveth a cheerful giver. Mm -hmm. That's why I don't teach tithing. I know some people don't hate me because tithing is not taught in the New Testament. The New Testament is. Uh, 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 the church of Christ when Christ came to give his life he died for our sins and he died that we, that we may have a right to the tree of life and that is through his blood that he gave his death, burial, and resurrection and his uh, and his, his new commandment that I said I give, I give unto you that you love one another as I have loved you his commandment of grace is how we're supposed to learn to give Mm -hmm. Great. If we learn how to give according to God's grace, the tithes that you give will not match the giving you would give because you love Christ and the church. Amen. Amen. You make a thousand dollars and give Lord a hundred dollars. Most people do not do that. That's ten percent. The Old Testament doesn't teach ten percent as it's been told us and directed to us. If you follow the Old Testament structure of tithing, it actually comes up to about 37%, not 10. So we must learn the difference. That's why I try to make you and show the difference between the Old Testament and the New Testament. Well, we learn how to give. The lady who gave two pennies, she gave all that she had because mm -hmm. of her love to give. Some Amen. laughed at her, but because of her two cents. But her two cents was of greater value to the sight of God because in her heart, her two cents was 100%, when most mm -hmm. people aren't even given 5%, 2%. Now, let's look at something else. If you follow the Old Testament law closely, when you make decisions in your mind, you do not find where the 
people who were elderly, the poor, they were not ordered to give tithes of any amount. I will break that down for you sometime. So when you go after people who are uh, elderly people on fixed income who are poor and you make these type of statements about you got to give 10 percent of what you have in order to be blessed because god was and has demanded that that is not true this is why it's difficult for me to sit up under so much leadership because they do not know what the word says god if you read the testament that's why they had to give when they did two turtle doves or they gave uh birds or uh, or something like that because if they had to give for their when they were giving for their sacrifices, they gave things that were cheap and easy for them to get their hands on. It was not equal with others who had land, cattle, and that type of resources. So let's keep moving. I'm making a different message on that. So I'm gonna keep going with this. Verse eight says, and God is able to make all grace. We talked about how God's grace is sufficient for us all. Here it is, piece of it again. Able to make all grace abound towards you. What are we talking about? Those who have learned how to give, uh, 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 freely give, not grudgingly nor of necessity, for God knows that you're a forgiver. That is able to make grace abound towards you means just because you've done it in a, in a loving manner, God will respond unto you in a very abundant way. That ye also having all uh, sufficiency in all things may abound to every good work. Verse 9, as it is written, he has dispersed abroad. He has given to the poor. His righteousness remaineth forever. So regardless of where you are, where you give, and what you do, your righteousness is never forgotten, nor does it ever end. Verse 10 says, now he that ministers seed to the sower, both minister bread for your food and multiply your seed shown and increases of fruit, fruits of your righteousness. As I has I gave in a testimony earlier, when I gave, God gave back to me more than what I gave out. This is what he's saying for your benefit. When you give it out of your heart, when you give it because of God, the things that you give, the things that uh, 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 minister bread to the people. It says in that verse 10, and multiply your seed shown. Look at this. I may have given somebody an ear of corn, but how many seeds is on that one ear of corn? This is what he's saying, that when you give somebody something, the seeds that's part of what you're giving is sown, and it comes back to you for your righteousness, you cannot be God giving. Verse 11 says, being enriched in everything to all bountifulness, which causes through us thanksgiving to God. When we give, we're giving not to the people, but we're giving unto God. Verse 12 says, for the administration of the service not only supplies the one of the saints, but is abundant also by many thanksgiving unto God. So when we learn how to give, we are learning how to give unto God. Now, when we talk about money, that's usually the, the most critical part of uh, our living. We get up because we got to work or we got something we do have to do or something we have to go by. So the question is, Lord, what will you have me to do? So when we talk about our finances, when we talk about our time, when we talk about doing something for others, I think it is a good thing for us to always ask God, what should we do? As we showed here earlier, that the average person, depending on their job and their responsibilities, are making uh, 35,000 decisions every day. I asked my wife the other day about that. How many decisions do you make in a day? She said, oh, about 500. 500, and I laughed because I already knew what my answer was. She said, well, what is it? I, I said, because of the internet search that I've done, 
is noted that the average person makes about 35,000 decisions a day. How many decisions did you just make while I was making that that sentence? <laughs> she started laughing and she started talking about right. the thing, uh, about uh, what I was saying just in that moment. I mm -hmm. even had to imagine how many decisions and thoughts that went through your mind just in the time I've been talking in this last 35 minutes. It's That's God, right. It's God's time. And you guys, man or woman. So That's right. Proverbs talks about in all thy ways acknowledge so out of those approximately 35,000 decisions you make a day, how many of those decisions were made consulting God? 35,000 decisions a day. I asked my wife, uh, how do you view that? How does God look at you going about all day long and making decisions? And perhaps maybe you haven't even uh, thought about him or uh, ask him anything about what you do on the next step. Oh, I'll give you the benefit of the doubt. Maybe you asked him about 10 times that day. Uh, uh, what should you do? How does God feel about that? And Sister Bradford, do you want to uh, respond on that again? Go ahead. I know he asked me to remember what I said. <laughs> I'll try my best. I said that I believe that God allows us to make decisions at least at least considering him at least half of the time. And I said, um, I don't think he's disappointed in us for not for not considering him the whole time because he if we have him in our heart, then I believe as long as we're making those decisions with with him earnestly in our heart, that he wouldn't be disappointed in us not considering him at the time we make those decisions. Amen. Because Amen. if you child of God, you have given your life to Christ, then your entire life ought to be an action of Christ. There are some things that maybe you may not know how God would demand you to move or make a decision. That is the time to ask Christ, Lord, what would you have me to do? As long as you live in right, I think in Galatians 5, I think it's around, I can't remember what verse it is. He says, the fruit of the spirit is long suffering, peace, joy. Um, some of the other might, you I else may be able to remember those right there offhand. As long as you got the fruit of the spirit in your life, every action that you make and every decision that you make through the day will be a reflection of Christ already speaking into your spirit. So you don't have to ask the question 335,000 times a day, Lord, what would you have me to do? But there are some decisions during that day that may not line up with what your norm is or you out of your comfort zone, or this is something new to me. Lord, what do you want me to do? In the last days, it says that uh, fathers will be against sons and daughters against mothers in the last days. And we're looking in these last days where we're looking at sons killing mamas and daddies and daughters killing mamas and daddies and hating and so much turmoil going on in our own personal families that is out of the norm and when you have a child that don't lost their mind and don't want to act right you have to ask the lord lord what do you have what will you have me to do because there are some decisions god has allowed you to be put in a situation for you to be tested God already knows what you're going to do. So you need to consult God because God's not doing it for you, for him to know what you're going to do. He allows you to go through it so you can see what you're going to do. Does that make sense to anybody? God, Amen. God knows mm -hmm. us from head to toe. He yes, knows he us. Uh, as he told Jeremiah, before you were born, I knew you. Yes, he did. 
before I, before I had a chance to even be on this earth. So God gives us an opportunity to live for him. And we must often keep in mind that this life is no longer ours, but it is Christ. The Bible says that our bodies are the temple of God. God lives and dwells within us. Yes, and we must be careful what we do with this temple, what, how we act and the things that we do because God is a part of us. The reason some of us feel and some people te teach that you lose your salvation because you thought wrong or you said the wrong word or you did something. Now you don't lose your salvation like that. That's not happening. But what does happen is when you are working outside of the spirit of God, the Holy Ghost will will not move and within your spirit for you to make good decisions and do the right thing because when you do wrong, speak wrong, those things is how you quench the spirit of God. The spirit of God cannot work and function in you when you're doing wrong things. So God, uh, what will you have me to do? It's a new direction. It's a new life. I got 35,000 uh, decisions to make, God. Uh, will you be a part of all of them for me today? That might be a good place to start for everyone. Every morning when you get up, Lord. I ask you, Father God, that you direct my footsteps all day long. Watch my mouth and my decision making as I go throughout my entire day. Lord, I ask you to dwell within my mindset when I have to make decisions. Ask God to do that for you, and he will step in and, and right on time. Let's look at this also from another perspective. If you got somebody who has a problem with maintaining their spirituality, then you know that before they do the wrong thing, there's one thing they're not saying, Lord, what will you have me to do? Because the Lord is not going to have you to go out there to slap somebody and curse somebody out. That's not the will of God. He's not going to have you go up to somebody that's uh, sick and, and needing food and needing help for you to walk by and just ignore them. As a matter of fact, today, uh, believe me, when I, I speak to you, I practice what I preach. I try hard to make sure that I'm doing the very thing that I've asked people to do. And my, even as today, my wife and I was pulling out from another location up there on Blue Ridge Day in Kansas, Missouri. There was a lady walking down the street, and it was hot, and she was carrying some bags. And I said, oh, my God, where's she going? And I, I looked at it, and then I pulled off, and my wife says, maybe we ought to go up. I asked her if she wanted to ride. Well, that was my heart, and I wanted to do it too. So we turned the car around right quick and went back up there, and she walked over to the uh, drive of a church's chicken. And we rolled down the windows. Do you need a ride somewhere? She just said, I'm trying to get the church's chicken and, and give me some chicken. And I was waiting for her to say she needs some money because I'm going to give it to her. But uh, she, she didn't ask for none. And then uh, I, we said, she, uh, my wife told her to open up at 10. Well, and she asked, what time is it? 9.15. That's 45 more minutes. She said, oh, I guess I just have to wait. I said, okay, I've done what I was told to do. Come and check. To Amen. See if she needed, needed help. If she needed money, I would have gave it to her. I was concerned about her. Now, that lady may have been an angel in disguise to see what Reverend and Sister Bradford was going to do. Mm -hmm. Y'all hear my drip? That's you right. Amen. Amen. You must be careful what you do. Be careful of what you say. That lady may not uh, got may have disappeared. I don't know. Uh, but God allows people in front of us sometimes to be tested to show forth our spirituality and see if we will portray who he is. Mm -hmm. That's what our life is here for. And it was hot out there. I, I would not want to stay, but she didn't ask to get in the car. She made no attempt. And she said, well, can I get in there to cool off a little bit? Then I would have sacrificed my time to sit right there in front of the church's chicken with a strange woman in the back of my car. <laughs> now, it was easy for me to say I would have done that because my wife was present. I don't know if I would have done that if my wife wasn't present. So be the things. Be careful. That's all I'm saying. Even with one another, we won't know one That's another. Cool. We must be careful how we talk with one another, treat one another, and then make sure that we do it with the zeal of the Lord, not that we get anything out of it, not that we'll get praise, not that somebody's going to pat us on the back, all talk about how great a job you did. That's not what we, what we do this for. 
We do it because Amen. God is in us and we are representing him. So when we make Amen. decisions in life, regardless of who it is, make sure that your decision is based upon the response that God has given us. You know, maybe every Christian ought to walk around with those wristbands that say WW. Let's see. How, how's that go? WW. What would God do? What would Jesus do? What would God do? Mm -hmm. maybe, uh, would Jesus, what would that. Jesus do? Yeah. WWJ. Mm -hmm. Yeah, come on. I like, see? So, reminders. But see, when we look at each other, we should be reminders to one another. Mm -hmm. We are our brother's keeper. Amen. Proverbs. In all thy ways. Acknowledge him. Acknowledge him. And, and he, he shall direct. He shall direct thy breath. That's what he didn't get mm -hmm. here. Or maybe if you did that, he didn't say none of that. He said, In all my ways, acknowledge him and well, he, he said. So that we can that trust God to respond, but can he mm. trust you to do the right thing? Mm. Amen. Always ready. Now, this message has been preached in your hearts and in your spirit. Satan heard it, he's mad, and he's gonna test you. Be prepared. God's gonna not and will not allow Satan to do anything against you that he, God, is not prepared to bless and protect you in the midst of it. If you have any question about it, ask Joe. Joe went, he went through a lot of he it. Uh, mm -hmm. Just because you're a child of God does not mean you're not gonna go through things. Y'all hear that? That don't mean you're not going to go through things. It just means that God, when He in His time, will bring you through it. Yes, He will. So, Sister Wright, that tooth thing, my tooth hurts for you, but God will take care of it. Just do what He told you to do. So I know you probably are in and asking, Lord, what will you have me to do? If you need help, Amen. let us know. If you need transportation, let us know. We're here to help you if you are in need of any help. So don't sit up there with no pain and ain't ask us for anything. Amen. If you need help from us. You may not need Praise the Lord. Amen. Thank you very much. I'm in good shape. I'm in good shape. It just started. All I'll right. see the out. Right. I'm going to take care of it tomorrow. Oh, great. Thank yeah. you, Lord. I want to see you. Yeah. Uh, I care about everybody. I, hey, does anybody else know that when somebody say they have pain that you can feel their pain? Mm-hmm. I sure do. I had one. When somebody talk about all oh, they 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 jammed their foot into a, a curb or something and oh it hurts. Yes, I know what that's like because I broke a toe running my toe into a curb running. I do know. So when people hurt, you ought to be able to understand their pain. Because they look. Amen. Why should, why I say that? Because God sent his son to this world. His son Jesus didn't have to leave heaven to come down here. But when he came here, everything that we felt, he felt. He spit on, his beard was plucked, he was lied on, he was Amen. Uh, 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 cursed at, uh, he was abused, then they took him. And, and put him in prison and all the stripes that he took so that we could be healed. We got to we got to teach on that sometimes too. all those stripes. Uh, the oh, Lord, yeah. took, if I'm not mistaken, is also a representative of every uh, documented sickness that man can take. There's a category they have that shows all the different sicknesses. And there's a way they equated those to the strike that Christ took on his back for us. So there's no sickness that Christ has not already healed for us, taken for us. No sin has man, any man has uh, uh, committed that God has not forgiven. So we must be careful, be glad, be joyful, be exceedingly glad 
uh, to be able to do things for Christ because God is with us. So as I conclude on what I'm saying, I want you to say, God, what would you have me to do? Remember in all thy ways, acknowledge him and he shall direct our path. If somebody say, I don't know what to do. Yes, you do. Because Father, Amen. in all thy ways, acknowledge, acknowledge. him. But it don't seem to be at, working. Maybe he's not listening. Acknowledge him. Mm -hmm. Don't take him out of the equation. Put Christ in it. And, and if you're like me, you don't have no other resources, but you don't have no, no choice but to put him in it. Lord, here it is. Amen. No Lord, here it is. I, I don't have no doctors that stand by my side to help me on everything here. So, Lord, here it is. Amen. My wife is mad at me today, Lord. Here it is. <laughs> she ain't mad at me. I know. I know. <laughs> uh, so, but because Lord had put her in my life, the Lord governs her, and she also governed me because he put me in her life. Although we're not perfect. I don't know. Maybe she might be perfect. I don't know. I'm not perfect. So I know God has to deal with me at times. So we must remember there's nothing that God can't have. And, and there's not an answer. He does not have an mm -hmm. answer to. Some people say, you can't question God. I don't question God. I just want an answer from God. God, what do you want me to do? That's right. Why, how you want it done? That's uh, right. Why'd you do that, Lord? Somebody say, why you question God? Who can give me that answer but God? That's right. Amen. I'm not questioning to doubt who he is. I'm questioning because I want to know what I got to do. Because I know he has the answer. So I don't want to belabor this topic and the things to be said, but I just want you to keep in mind, one, to fast on Tuesday if you can or whatever way you can. The other one is to remember that in all the 35,000 or more or less decisions that you have to make during the day, if you walk in a life that's full of Christ, every decision you make is within Christ. Do not quench the spirit because the spirit is there waiting. Sometimes the spirit of man is just dying to do something. And we're not doing nothing. Give him a chance to work through your hands, your mouth. If you don't have enough money, give him a smile. That ain't cost nothing. Or during the time of the coronavirus, you may not be able to hug, but let them feel your spirit through your voice and, and let your voice wrap them in a cradle of your love. They can tell that. Mm -hmm. Amen. Smile, them seem like they can make a, a dead man rise up out of the grave because they smile just seems so full of life. And then you got some people who's got so much dead in their, in their life that every time they speak, it <clears throat> seems like it kills the spirit of man every time he comes across them. And there's, the world is full of evil. We don't. Just Hallelujah. It's full of evil. So yes. We, we have the answer. Let's go out there and let the world see it. And I'm asking each and every one of you now take what God has given you and go preach and teach and tell everybody about what God has done for you and what he's getting ready to do because I believe he's going to raise the saints up, do great things before he pulls us out. The last mm -hmm. days is close. I, I just. It would yes, surprise yeah. me if God called us out of here this year, but that I, I don't know that. God mm -hmm. is so patient. That's why it's so good God didn't give me the uh, the, the, the opportunity to, to make a decision when the world ends and who dies. Mm -hmm. uh, there would be a lot of unhappy people. So God is the only one that has that right. And I've learned that God is a very patient. God. Yes, yes. And even when we can yes. hide the things, God may, may put up with things for years. Go back and read your Bible. Years yes. before he, before he answered. He will answer. Amen. Anybody else have anything they'd like to say or, or, or give at this time? 